Hello. For today, I'm going to be sharing with you some research that I've been working on on needles through history. But first, if you like this video, make sure you click the thumbs up for the like and click subscribe. That way you can be informed when a new video comes out. I'm trying to do about two videos a week. Now on to my research. So welcome to Needles in History. And this is just what I have found out so far. If I get anything incorrect, please correct me. If you have more questions about something, please feel free to ask. So throughout the course of history, what have needles been used for? They've been used for sewing, such as garments, as well as fishing nets, also for embroidery, knitting, but there are also other types of needles, such as needles needed for acupuncture, medicinal purposes, or tattoos. What materials have been used throughout history to make these needles? These materials include bone, silver, steel, ivory, copper, bronze, iron, brass, cactus needles, glass, although with the glass, it, that was probably a hairpin, not actually used as a needle that, what we would think of as a needle. And there are probably more materials out there, such as maybe going out to a particular thorn bush and using something like that. So going from early, 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 the Paleolithic period, the oldest needle in current existence dates back about 60,000 years ago. And it was from an animal, probably a bird, and so it's a bone, and it was found in South Africa. From between 30,000 to 45,000 years ago, other needles have been made of bone or ivory, and they were found in Slovenia, China, and Russia. Around 30,000 years ago, the earliest known embroidery example was found in Russia. About 25,000 years ago is when the first needle with an eyelet is dated to. Before having the eyelet, or I'll also refer to it as just being an eye, but before that, they would have just a simple little nick in the side of the needle, but I'll get more into that later. The Paleolithic needles were made of animal bones, antlers, and tusks. And these needles, as I just mentioned a moment ago, had grooves instead of eyes to hold the sinew or the fiber. On to the Neolithic Age. About 7,000 BC, a major development in human technology happened. Arminian copper needles mark the development of metal harnessing. So before this, they were probably using just either bone or remember how I mentioned like the thorn from a thorn bush, something like that. But after this is when metal starts to be used. And on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a picture these are of bone needles from somewhere between 4,000 to 10,000 years ago, and this is currently in the Shanghai Museum in China. And more about the Neolithic Age. About this picture is of 12,000 year old bone needles, and these were found in southwestern France, and these are currently in the Museum of Toulouse in France. I haven't found any information from specifically the Copper Age. So if you have any information, please feel free to share, and I will continue to research and see if I find anything more about this, this particular age. So on to the Bronze Age. Around 1195 BC, the secret of hardening iron reached Europe from India. Thus, bronze needles were born. And so on the right-hand side of the screen, you will see a bronze needle with an eye. It's approximately five inches long, and it's from about the second millennium BC. And it's currently on display at the Met Museum and there's a link to go view it. So onto the Iron Age. On the left-hand side of the screen, instead of an embroidery needle or a sewing needle, I included a pen-sized tattoo needle that's at least 2,000 years old. It carbon dates um, showing about 79 to 130 AD. The thing I find interesting about this is it's made from a skunk bush sumac handle and it has two tiny cactus spine needles all bound together in yucca leaves found in utah so 
This is now at the Washington State University Museum of Archaeology. I just, I thought this was interesting and wanted to share. And the Iron Age continued. On the right hand side of the screen is a copper um, slash bronze needle from an, well, a copper bronze needle with an eye. It's from about the 9th century BC from Iran. It's approximately six and three quarters of an inch long. And it's currently not on display at the Met Museum, but there's a link below to view it. So, on to the Roman Age. Remember at the beginning when I listed the different materials, such as steel and bone, I also mentioned glass, but may have been a hairpin? That's this guy. It's a Roman glass needle from the first century AD. It's approximately six and one eighth of an inch long with a diameter of three sixteenths of an inch. It is a translucent light blue with an opaque white tail. It's a solid rod tapering at one end point and then at the other end point it was split to two prongs and then drawn together and connected at the other end to create the eye. It's on display at the Met Museum and there's the link for it. And let's fast forward on to the Middle Ages. On the right hand side is a Viking needle case with part of a chain. Bronze needles or bronze needle cases were used to hold and protect needles and this needle case actually still contains an iron needle in it. And this is available at the Swedish History Museum. On the left hand side of the screen is an iron needle with an eye from the Viking Age. On the right hand side of the screen are all Viking needles found from Coppergate. On the right hand side of the screen, I included this because it's also known as a lacing or a threading needle. It's technically it's called a bodkin and it's a late medieval English silver bodkin. It has two eyelets and three circular holes on it. It's now in the Museum of London. And bodkins were used to thread cords or ribbons through pre-made holes and tubes in a cloth or a garment, or they may have also been used as hairpins. So for example, if you had a dress with eyelets going up the dress, then you would use the bodkin to put your thread through the bodkin and then this would help you lace up your dress. In the Renaissance, on the left hand side is another bodkin. Um, this is a silver bodkin from England from about 1620 to 1640. It's currently on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And dating to the 14th century, German cities had specialized specialized guilds of needle makers. In 1496, Leonardo da Vinci constructed a machine to point sewing needles. One of the things I found interesting while doing this research was that during Henry VIII's reign, roughly about 1545, there was only one needle maker in all of London. This needle maker was an immigrant from Spain. He was a Moor. And originally, the Chinese were the ones who discovered how to make needles out of steel. And then that knowledge got passed on into the Middle East. And then from the Middle East, with the Moors being in the Middle East, they passed that information on into Spain. And so then this immigrant went from Spain on up into London, and he was able to have an, a monopoly on steel needles. He did not take any apprentices because he did not want any competition. Well, later when he died, there was no one there in London, well, in all of England to make needles until about 1560, when Christopher Grenning learned the trade and became the next steel needle maker. And prior to making these needles, usually a blacksmith would make them and they were, they were crude and rough. But eventually word got out and people figured out how to make needles. So in 1567, a small town in England called Redditch learned how to draw their own fine steel wires and quickly became world famous for their high quality and manufacturing 
of handmade sewing needles. And here's an example on the right hand side of the screen is the full portrait and on the left hand side of the screen is the bottom left corner of the portrait zoomed in and it's a portrait of Costanza Catani. It's from about 1480 to 1490. And in this picture, she has pins, thimble, and the sewing needle. And this painting is available at the National Gallery. On the left-hand side of the screen is a painting from about 1583. It's in the Germanisches National Museum, and it's a picture of a needle maker. On the right-hand side of the screen is, there's a full portrait, but I just zoomed in on the bottom part of the portrait near her hands, and it's the portrait of the wife of Philip Gundelius from about 1575 to 1585. And it's listed as being at the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna. But when I went to that website, I couldn't find the painting. So I also included the website link of where I found that information. But if you look in the painting, she has a variety of things such as scissors, pins, thread, a knife, and needles. On into the industrial age. In 1824, about 5 million needles were handmade per a week in Redditch. Remember that Redditch from a moment ago? Let me go back. You remember that small town at the bottom? 1567, that small town in England called Redditch, and they learned how to make their own fine steel wires? Well, by 1824, they were making 5 million needles per hand, or Five million needles were handmade per week in Redditch. However, by 1847, because of the Industrial Age and the introduction of machinery, Redditch was able to make 50 million needles per week. And so from the worthpoint.com website, I found a couple of pictures from the 19th century. And this just shows you how needles went from being handmade and precious to industrial age they are manufactured they can make many at one time and now it's a cheap commodity that anyone can own and for modern times here's um, modern needles on the left hand side and on the right hand side at the canadian museum of history it's a copper needle from about 1916 it actually says 1916 or earlier which to me is quite big because Neolithic times can be earlier than 1916, but hey, I wanted to include it just because it is a copper needle. And it's about says seven centimeters long and three tenths of a centimeter in width. So a little bit more about needles in history. An early reference to the use of needles comes from the Bible and the Quran. In the Bible, Adam and Eve sew fig leaves together to adorn themselves with an apron for some modesty. In the Quran, the needle is one of the five tools brought to paradise by Adam. Many historic needles found are only partially preserved. This is mainly caused by the effect of oxidation, which destroys metallic needles after a short time. Even 19th century needles are now rarely found intact. The needle has social subtexts that spoke of social standing technology and gender identity. Women used to protect their or women used to protect their needles in special cases, which were attached to their belts. Do you remember that Viking needle case from a, a few slides ago? Yes, they would attach it to their belt, and because these were special. And until the industrial age, needles were exotic treasures that were special and rare. The first recorded printed advertising found about a needle, it was from China in 1200 AD. And through most of history, bone needles seem to have been preferred um, as they didn't leave rust stains on the fabrics and the embroideries like metal needles did. And also the bone needles, they were more easily available. Anyone can go out and find, or say, go kill a bird, 
or the chicken or whatever, you would have something for food and then, hey, there is bones left over after you eat the meat and create a needle out of those bones. For the needles, you would either need a blacksmith or you would need a needle maker. And then even with that, you do run into the problem with rust stains. And that's why in today's society, we have needles made of high carbon steel wire, but they're nickel plated for corrosion resistance. And here's just a little work cited if you want to check out more information. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Remember to select thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe.